Eddie, what are you feeling like just being two days away from this big bout? I feel excellent, man. We had a great, um, amazing camp. I couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better camp. Um, this, uh, the weight cut and everything like that's been beautiful. Um, and I think we're right on point. We're ready to go. We have a first question here from Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. Leon, please go ahead. Eddie, you said um, you, you believe a win on one and TNT one will earn your title shot. Do you think any win will do that? Or do you think you need to make a statement with a big win? Um, a statement with a big win will do it. I mean, uh, I don't know. I'm not the promoter. So for me, it's about going in there and always making a statement. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here just to win. Wins are for me. Uh, being spectacular is for, for the fans. So I step in the cage, and the idea is always to be spectacular. Um, winning is usually just a byproduct of that. So, um, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm ready to go. We have a next question here from Jay Anderson of Cage Side Press. Eddie, welcome back. Uh, thanks for the time tonight. Uh, you know, I just want to know how frustrating the past year has been for you in terms of, I mean, at 37, your window in the sport is limited and then missing out uh, a year due to the pandemic. How rough has that been and how good is it right now to be getting back to work? Uh, I, I'm going to correct you there. I don't have a limited window. Um, this is my, oh, I, this is almost my second decade in this sport and I love what I do, but, um, uh, it hasn't been frustrating. I, I got a chance to kind of heal. And, and like I said, I've been fighting two decades, a little bit of time off never hurts anybody. And I think it wasn't just uh, my problem. It was the world's problem. So I think all champions, whenever they face adversity, you have to adjust, you have to pivot, and you have to change direction and do what you can do within within your means to keep your life going. And in my eyes, I just got a chance to kind of see my family, see my kids, and work that part of my life. Um, I, I'm a father and a husband first who happens to fight. So, um, you know, I got a chance to be a better father, a better husband. Glad to hear it. And, you know, what would a – a third title and a, a third major promotion mean to you at this point in your career? I, I, for me personally, I, I'm, I'd be the greatest lightweight to ever grace the sport of MMA. That's how I feel about it. Um, it's easy to be great for five years or 10 years and, 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 and have that energy to be able to do that. Um, just to take on the sport and be energetic and excited about what you do. But this is almost two decades going traveling all parts of the world, fighting champion after champion after champion from all over. Um, not staying in one place and taking on all challengers. So at the end of the day, my resume will speak for itself. And um, anybody want to debate it, just check the scoreboard. All right, thanks very much. Chris De Santiago of MMA Island. I know you're looking for like triple crown status. And, you know, uh, with yourself as number one, as like the lightweight GOAT, where do you rank the others in the light, lightweight GOAT conversation, like Habib and BJ Penn and Dustin Poirier? Second. <laughs> <laughs> They're all second. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate it. No problem, brother. Ivan Stewart of Dugout Philippines. Ivan, please go right. ahead. With Good your morning, question. everyone, again. Good morning, Eddie. All right. So, speaking of Dustin, the last time you were on. U.S. television was against Dustin. So how is it like to be back on U.S. TV after three years? I'm ecstatic, man. I think it re-energized re me. Um, I, you definitely don't want to get lost to, to your hometown fans. I love coming to Asia. I love fighting. Asia kind of helped make me who I am. So uh, going back to the St. Thomas Super Arena, Tokyo Dome, and, and going back to Asia and fighting for my Asian fans, was a, it was a dream come true to go back to. But um, at the end of the day, you want to fight for your home down fans. You want your family to be able to see it. You want your friends to be able to see it. And, um, you know, I was blessed enough to be able to get on to TNT. And we we're all able to go fight live on TNT. And it, it's everything I envisioned when I joined one championship. We spoke about this. We spoke about the possibility of this happening. And now it's all happening. Right, just a quick follow-up. Uh, would you prefer this type of setup in which you're fighting on a midweek instead of a weekend? I'll fight any day of the week. I mean, I uh, if you catch me on a Tuesday, I'll be fighting. Catch me on a Saturday, I'll also be fighting. I fight uh, twice a week, sometimes three times a week. Um, training, I don't care if it's in a cage, a mat, an alley. I'll fight anywhere 
and uh, I'll do it two or three times a week. Next question from Carlo Pamintuan of TV5. Carlo, please go ahead. A huge jump of your life to MMA and you train like a beast, but do you feel like you have additional motivation that this fight is on TNT and that you'll get to remind the U.S. fans about what you do? Absolutely. I feel like the, it's it, when, when they go on American television like that live and you get a slot, a co-main event slot, it's like it's your show. You know, I feel like it's my show again. And I feel like it's my obligation to put it on for the fans. So, um, yeah, it rejuvenated me, reinvigorated me, and um, definitely pushed me to another level during my training to be able to go out there and, and put out and show out. Next question here from Simon Romero of Behind the Grid. Um, I just want to know, do you feel like there's something uh, that you have to prove here in your second fight for one championship? Prove. I'm, the only proven, you know, that I, that I feel like I have to do is to myself. Um, I just want to go out there and put on my best show. I know, I know what I did. I know the kind of camp I put in, the sacrifice I put in, and the improvements that I made. So, I mean, I, I just feel I prove things to myself as a martial artist. Every day I make that walk um, into things sometimes that I don't want to do, and it requires the discipline and the courage to do that. And I, You know, at the end of the day, I'm proud of myself for that, and uh, I prove things to myself. I don't prove things to anyone else. And this last one I have for you here, I want to know what do you need to do in order to be successful against uh, your Lapicus come fight night? I, what I what I need to do is already done. Um, come fight night, just have to perform, execute, and I do the same things I've been doing for the past two months. I've been going out there, putting pressure on my opponent, um, touching them up, and I think, uh, I think I have a lot of um, advantages in boxing. I think he makes a lot of mistakes standing up, and I make him, make him pay. From Angel Jude Briosos of MMA Overtime Heroics. Uh, having captured championships in two of the biggest promotions in, in America, um, people surely expect you to see uh, carry on that dominance in one. Uh, uh, your road to the title shot has been delayed due to that loss against Timofey, and so this fight is important to you securing that title shot again. So des describe your emotions leading into this matchup as far as the pressure goes on you. And does it ever get to you, the pressure? How do you manage it? Yeah, I deal with the pressure on a daily basis. You know, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy. I'm, I'm my biggest critic. So when I go into the gym, I want to make sure that I compete at a high level. I'm, I'm executing the things I'm working on. And um, I think when I go out there, it's just a byproduct of my training. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think there's any pressure on my shoulders other than just to go out there and and do what I do every day. So uh, I'll rely on my instincts. I'll rely on myself. I have a deep trust and belief that I'm the best in the world. And when I go out there and perform, no one in the world can beat me. Do you think that winning the one championship, champ, one championship uh, lightweight title is the uh, last thing that you have uh, left to fulfill before you want to call your career quits? Um, I can't say. I can't say that. I can't ever say that I'm going to quit. So um, I, the thing is, I never planned on doing this. It's just something that was inside me. And um, I'm not going to start making plans now. You know, I'm, I'm just shy of two decades. I think I can make it two decades. And that would be pretty damn cool. I think I'm like 18 years in. So um, we'll see. Okay, thank you, Eddie. Uh, good luck on your match. Next question from Dylan Bowker of My MMA News. Dylan, kind of curious about some of the dynamics leading into this one because it seems like there's a degree of trash talk coming from Lap because it's end of things, but you seem pretty unfazed by that largely. But I'm kind of wondering, is there any level of, you know, being the living legend and being perceived as like the statement name for some of these guys? Does that inform your performance at all? Does it give a bit of a chip on your shoulder in any kind of way at all? I feel like when I came in on my debut, it was adding pressure and affecting me in a way. I don't like, I don't like uh, just getting respect. I like earning it. I like taking it. That's, that's like part of the hunt for me. Um, it's part, part of my motivation and drive. And when I'm just given respect like that, it kind of takes, takes a little bit of the drive away. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't like being perceived as that, but like I, I changed my own perspective on it and it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what they call me. It doesn't matter what I did in the past. It doesn't matter what I did my last fight or um, whether I won or lost. What matters is right now on this next opponent that's in front of me. That's all that matters. And that's all that ever matters.
Was there a distinct moment when you had that perspective shift that you noticed? I want to say that, you know, I, I've in my debuts in a lot of my debuts, um, whether, whether we're talking about Bellator UFC or, or even one championship, any one of the major promotions in the world, I've never done good in my debuts ever. Um, and I just, I look back and I was like, what was the, what was the one factor that, you know, that kind of separated my performance from being good and being able to go out there and just be myself. And I think a lot of it was the pressure of, you know, who I was, that the promotion was putting this name on me as one of like, a, whether it's a legend or, or the guy who's supposed to be the champion or whatever. And I was, I was holding that weight rather than just letting it roll off my shoulder. I was holding on to it and it wasn't allowing me to perform to the best of my ability. Next question from Dwee Wijat Miko of bolasport.com. Uh, Eddie, uh, you already fought uh, with the best in the lightweight division. Uh, how do you see uh, Lapikus? Uh, is he some, uh, has something special that made you uh, make uh, prepare, uh, adjustment to your preparation? Well, for me, uh, just even being in the weight class that I'm in is a challenge. The guys are much larger, you know, bigger frame than a lot of them are bigger than me. So it's a challenge already. And, and Lapicus has a lot of skills. He's well-rounded. He's relaxed. He fights like a veteran. And um, I'm looking forward to the challenge. I see holes in his game. I see mistakes he makes, and I'm going to make him pay for them. But, um, no, he's a very good fighter. You don't go 13-0, and 0, you know, without being a good fighter. He's, be he's beaten a lot of good guys, and um, I, I respect him. Could you give give me a name? How uh, do we should uh, call you if you uh, become a one championship uh, champion? You already uh, champion in Bellator and uh, USC. Uh, if you manage to to become champion in one, how do we uh, call you? You can you cannot uh, take triple C because it's taken. <laughs> Call, call me what you call me from the first time. You <laughs> call me Eddie Alvarez. <laughs> Nick Akin of South China Morning Post. Nick, please go ahead. Your one championship career has been paired with Demetrius Johnson. You've both been on all the same cards or scheduled to be at least. What do you make of his fight coming up um, against Adriana Marais? Do you have a pick for that? I always pick Demetrius. I I mean, he to me, he's the, he's the greatest uh, champion that, that lived – Nobody has done what he's done. Nobody has more belts. He's broken. He's broken the record there, and um, you know he'll go down as one of the greatest fighters to ever to ever grace MMA. So um, you can't bet against a guy who wins that much. If Demetrius knows how to do anything, uh, whether it's kick, punch, takedown, whatever, he knows how to win. He finds a way to win. So um, I'm looking forward to the matchup. I'm a fan of his. I've always been a fan of his. From Mike Murillo of Business World. You have fought in big MMA markets all your career. How big is this event for one championship to be shown on primetime in the U.S.? I kind of feel like this is this will be one's coming out party in America because until until now, um, it's been on coffee time in the mornings and um, marketing, like as far as the, the marketing of the events, I think this, this is, they took it to another level with uh, marketing it during March Madness doing the trailers that they've done, um, bringing in uh, Will Harris from an Anatomy of a Fighter to kind of uh, follow our day by day. So they've done some 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 really good um, production, some really good media behind this, and, and it has a really good push. So um, American fans will see one championship in a different light come April 7th, and um, I'm excited to be, you know, to be part of that event. And I feel like after April 7th, when they see what they see, It'll be there'll be a new uh, there'll be a new guy in town. Eddie, at this stage of your career, it's safe to say that you've accumulated a lot of skills. What else in your game are you improving on daily? Um, for me, it's about using all my skills, um, using everything. Um, I, a lot of times, I get into fights and it's the same same thing over and over. It could be they all just kind of turn into brawls and things like that. And I think using everything is important to me. I want to be able to use everything. I want to be able to use my kicks, my punches, my takedowns, my jujitsu. I want to be well-rounded and I want to look like a, a well-rounded fighter out there. So um, it, although I try to do it, my fights end up end up becoming uh, brawls 
And I, 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 I've been trying to change that hasn't been happening, but um, I'm doing my best inside the training room to use all my tools, to use everything I got. We have this next question here from Singapore Strike Sports. Like they said, like you say, you have been um, fighting for Bellator, you're fighting for UFC, and now you're for one championship. So right now, for the first time, that one championship will be premiering at prime time. What message do you like to give to the American fans to convince them to watch one championship? Uh, well, my first experience with Asian martial arts has always been pride, you know, and, and uh, pride when I was a kid um, was some of the greatest martial arts uh, ever. As far as the event, as far as the fighters, the way they, the way they uh, produced it, the way they directed it. And uh, the first time I went to a one championship show, I just remember I had complete chills. I had chills all the way up my spine, uh, seeing the way that they produce it, the way we came out on the stage, um, it, it felt it felt like old school Asia MMA. You know, that's what it felt like. The fight drums, everything about it uh, brought back memories to me when I was a kid. So um, I feel like the American fans are going to be able to feel that. They're going to be able to feel what I felt, especially the hardcore fans who, you know, who've been a fan of pride back in the day and all the other Asian martial arts, pain craze and everything else. Um I feel like uh, one one is the top dog and they're going to take over America in short order. One more question here from Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. Leon, please go ahead. Hi, Gary. Um, just wondering, how do you see the Christian Lee, Timothy Nastyu can fight going down? Um, you know, that's a pick em. I feel like, you know, Christian does a good job uh, pulling people right into his grappling game uh, right away. And I think uh, Timothy... The main thing you're going to have to do against him is get him tired. I think you're going to have to do that from the very beginning, make him panic, get him tired, and make him gas out because Timothy is explosive, but the way to take that away is to wrestle him. And I think the, the style matchup, Christian can do a good job wrestling him in the beginning and uh, tiring him down and take away some of that explosiveness. So um, if Christian's able to do that and able to impose his grappling, I feel like he may be able to uh, – you know, tire, tire Timothy out and then maybe uh, be able to get a submission, but he's going to have to get him to the floor. And uh, if he don't, every minute that uh, Timothy Nostukin is, is on his feet is, you know, it could be a kill shot. It could be over for Christian Lee. So I'm looking forward to watching the fight. If you got preference who'd, who'd win there, you could obviously face the winner. If you got preference who you'd rather face? No, I don't care who it is. Um, it'd be nice if Timothy wins, it'd be nice to kind of, uh, get back into a title contention and get a rematch with Timothy. But if Christian wins, then, you know, he earned his keep and it'd be nice to get a shot at Christian. So either one of them, whoever it is, is going to have a target on their back after I beat yours. From Dylan Bowker of MMA News. Hey there, Eddie. I just had a quick question in regards to just, you know, the Grand Prix titles that are present in one championship, just with the backdrop of the recent video of Demetrius Johnson saying that it's the crown jewel just winning that Grand Prix championship because he comes from that, you know, background of the Grand Prix being so significant. Like you have certain tournament championships to your credit, like the Bellator championship in the past, but how important of a capstone would that be for the career to have a Grand Prix championship within one championship? Yeah, it seemed to escape me, uh, escape me back in 2006 in, in Asia and escape me again. Uh, two years ago here in Asia again. So they keep escaping me. And uh, I don't know why uh, I, I leave, I leave everything into the fight gods. When they speak, I listen and um, you know, you can try, try your butt off, work hard and do everything you can, but sometimes it's just not in your favor. And um, I wasn't able to, you know, when it came to the dream lightweight Grand Prix, they disqualified me from the tournament. I was the only, I was the only fighter in the tournament to go undefeated and they disqualified me for, for an eye injury. And then uh, for the one championship Grand Prix, I, I end up getting injured as well. So um, these Grand Prix are a lot about survival and, and staying, uh, staying healthy. And my style of fighting don't lend itself to stay healthy. It's not a very healthy style of fighting. Yeah, I was going to say, I guess being the violence weight champion doesn't lend itself well to that kind of format, eh? That's, that's one belt I do have. I am the most violent. So, um, 
Can't take that away from him. Eddie, we're going to move into some rapid fire questions here. First thing that comes to your mind, comes to your mind, just answer that. First one here, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Wisdom. You're stuck on an island and can only eat one fruit. What fruit are you picking? A canepa. Do you prefer to compete in the ring or the one circle? Uh, one circle. One ice cream flavor for the rest of your life. What are you going with? Chocolate. What's one of your all-time favorite movies? Cinderella Man. Who is the nicest one athlete that you've ever met? Edward Fulian, by far. If you're to go into a medieval battle, what weapon would you choose? I would, I would do the chain with the ball and the spikes at the end of it. Your favorite food? Favorite food? I'm going to say sushi. Who has the best fight style in one championship besides yourself? Besides myself, uh, best fight style, I'm going to say Rotang. That's it from us, Eddie. Thank you so much for your time. All the best.